it's change lock time. It's it's baking. Uh, it's baking right now. It's baking right now. Okay, it's baking. So this is going to be super fresh. So we're going to get a chance to have a look at what's in the change log for for Dino deploy, and you can give me a little bit of a tour. Is that okay? Absolutely. Nice. Um, let me show you some of our, our new stuff here. We we have a new mono repo feature, um, which is going to let you deploy repos that have more than one app in them. Um, so I have a little demo repo here called it's mono repo demo repo. It's, it's this one right over here. It has a hello world app in it, which is just a uh, little hello world app. And then we have this Next.js folder with the Next.js app in it. And on the new screen, when I select this mono repo demo, um, I can now choose which of the two apps I want to deploy. Um, and if I like choose the Next.js one, it'll it'll detect that it's Next.js. Right. If I choose the Hello World one, it'll detect that it's a Dino app, and it detects the entry point. And uh, yeah, I can deploy it. Hello World. I don't know. This is probably like the fifty sixth Hello World I've deployed on here. <laughs> <laughs> before you hit that, before you hit the 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 go button on that, how did it oh, choose yeah. the um, uh, oh, oh! You hit it. I, I was. Too I, I already hit it. I'm sorry. That's, that's all right. That's okay. I was just going to ask um, how. So it listed the two the two options there. Were those just the directories it found, or was it doing something more than that? Yeah, it um, it is based on uh, like the workspaces feature in both Dino and npm. Um, right. So if you have either this workspaces config inside your Dino JSON, or if you have a package JSON with a workspaces key in it. Um, it'll list all those out. And I think we're going to extend this in the future to be more generic as well and just pick up on like certain subdirectory structures. Um, but yeah, this okay, is the first pass. Nice. Um, we, you actually saw another new thing here while this was going on. It all went so went by so know, quick. I'm sorry. I, it was it's such a it. fast build for this example. And I, uh, I distracted us for the key moment. <laughs> <laughs> see things whizzing around. Let me go do it again. Oh, okay. um, there's a... New deploy section here, uh, which for whatever reason has gotten stuck. Oh no, this is the, the demo effect. There oh, we no. go. Okay. Um, and it's it's gone by very quick again. But uh, it yeah, you can you can see all the different deployments to all the different timelines in your of your revision all at the same time now. So if you remember previously, we had a warm up and a routing section here, right. um, and now you can see what's happening per. Uh, timeline. And for those of you who don't know what timelines are, timelines are uh, like the different contexts that you that your builds get deployed into. Um, right. So for example, if you push something onto main, it'll go to the production timeline. If you push it into a feature branch, it won't go into production, but it'll go into the feature branch timeline. Um, and that lets you like have a per PR URL, for example, that you can look at. Uh, right. And, and the reason we're seeing um, three things here is that because we you know we, we push to the main branch but the main branch is also set to be the production environment and yeah you can automatically get a preview as well is that right so it's that's it's right. only one build that's happened but it's pushed it to three places am i getting that right that's exactly right yeah right. and uh, if you scroll down here you can actually see all the three different ones so this is the preview one this is the preview url and then the production one and the branch one and the main difference is actually that, uh, yeah, if you have databases attached to your app, you'll get different databases for every one of these uh, contexts. So they don't like interfere with each other. So if you like push a bad migration into a feature branch, it won't pollute your production environment or other feature branches or right. other preview environments. Um, so like if you have multiple people working on things, it gets much easier because you don't, you don't have to coordinate about like locking the database and stuff like that. Right, nice. Yeah, and it feels it feels a bit cleaner to me as well because before there was just like a bunch of logging going on here in like under one big big bucket, right? And yeah. some of that you didn't necessarily know exactly what it what it meant, but now just like summarizing it makes sense, but also we just kind of hide away some of the complexity like things that are happening in warm up and roots. You def don't necessarily need to know like the gubbins that's happening behind the scenes for that, just knowing that we're we're doing that and that's being taken care of. Yeah, that's exactly right. And um, like if, if you do have like a pre-deploy command now, which I, we can demo that in a second, um, they, they also show up separately now, like the logs are shown for the, the branch where that pre-deploy command ran and they're not right. all like intermingled into the, into the warm up step. Um, should we, should we demo the pre-deploy command? Let's do it. Yeah. Why not? Um, so for those of you who don't know what a pre-deploy command is, it is, it gets run after the build is complete, um, once per timeline. 
And it's like most commonly used to do database migrations um, because every timeline has its own database. So you want to run migrations for each of those databases. Um, and you don't want to do it manually. So you can put a command in here like, I don't know, echo uh, running migrations. And this is definitely going to run migrations on a real database. Right. Um, yeah. But that's how we get yeah, the I, I, uh, that. so good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just log things out and don't actually do them. Um, <laughs> But yeah, if I, if I deploy this again, um, we'll see. There's definitely something wrong with this something deploy stuff yeah. today. There we go. To take a look at that later. Um, but you can see here that the pre-deploy command um, gets run here once for the, the Git branch timeline and then once for the production timeline um, separately. And like you can, you can see the individual logs here um, and, and they run in parallel. So yeah. Nice. And so I guess typically that would probably be some sort of script that's in your that's in your repo, right? And then you're you're running with that with a like a Dino run command. Where yeah, you exactly. Your, yeah, it's 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 either some sort of script or maybe you're running like Prisma migrate up or something, right? Like right. Some you're, you're using some ORM that has migration mig, uh, migration capabilities built in. Nice. Okay. Have we got a have we got a build of the changelog yet? Have we got a preview of the changelog so we can be ticking these things off? We do. Uh, let's go look at it. Um, let's head over to the change log here. Oh no, there it is. Um, yeah, so workspace support, um, dedicated deploy section. Top nav has changed. That's right. You may oh, have already yeah. seen this. Um, you can now jump directly from the application page into databases or into domains um, right. or into your billing settings, all of those things. Um, just a nice little quality of life thing. Um, previously, we had to jump back to the organization and then use the top nav. Yeah. Oh, that's. I'm. Um, I'm really glad this has landed because. Um, yeah. As as more things arrive in in deploy, in you know in the product, um, navigating through them from there was at the top was. I don't know. There wasn't much of a breadcrumb there. It was like this is you. Here's your thing. That's it. So now it's yeah. quite descriptive. So, um, yeah. That's. Uh, I think the timing of that is pretty good that that's now landed as more more things arrive in the product. Yeah, absolutely. Um, some other cool new stuff. We have a skip CI thing now that lets you like skip specific builds. Um, actually, I can, just, I can just demo that real quick. Uh, I have the my mono repo um, checked out locally here. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, make some change. Hello world. Get commit dash m skip ci um oh no i need to add this first and then commit that and then push it and then if i head back over here um we will see that uh yeah this this build was now skipped right um, so we see a little skipped icon here because it, it saw the skip ci it's really useful if you like i don't know are just pushing up a readme change and you don't want it to rebuild and uh, right. like trigger a, a long or expensive build for your app. I like that we still see it here in the in the build logs though. So you can see so you you never kind of lose your mind thinking I thought I was pushing changes and nothing's happening. You can see that a change was there, it was registered, but the reason it was skipped. So um, yeah. yeah, I'm kind of yeah. grateful that that's the way that works. Absolutely. Um so there's another feature that we've been working on. Um which has both like a little bit of security, but also a just like cleanliness thing, mm -hmm. um, which is that revisions that are older than 30 days and are not actively serving traffic and are not on your production timeline will get automatically deleted after slightly over a month. Okay. Um, so this is particularly important for like sites that access your database, for example, you don't want them to, uh, like you don't want people to be able to find old revision URLs, right? And like muck with your database because you had a security bug in there. Right. Um, so we'll automatically clean up old deployments now. In the future, you'll also be able to delete them yourself. I was going to ask exactly that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we do show this to you through the UI. Let me see if I have a demo here. This is this is a pretty old app um, that I have with a revision from seven months ago. Yeah. And um, we've only enabled this feature right now. So we're, we're not actually deleting things at the moment. We're just uh, marking them and showing you that we will delete them soon. Right. Um, but these these two old revisions here that are not currently on the production timeline, um, 
like they, they maybe just have a preview timeline attached or are in right. a branch or something like that, um, they will not, or they, they will be automatically deleted in now in four days because they haven't had any activity. Um, okay. And so, want... no, go ahead. And so, do they go? So you, they're kind of marked there for deletion. Do they go straight from being there and receiving tra traffic or, or being able to serve traffic to being deleted? Or did I spot that they were going to be disabled first? Yeah, they're going to be disabled first. So okay. um, after 30 days, the revision will get deleted or, well, sorry, will get disabled. Um, right. And that's 30 days without traffic to the revision. So if, if you like make a request to the revision, that resets the timer. Okay. Um, but 30 days after the last time you hit the, the app, um, or that the revision rather, it will get disabled and then the, the URL will stop working. It will start returning a 404. Uh -huh. um, and you'll get this message in here that it will be deleted in four days right. or seven days or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then after this timer elapses, it will then actually get deleted. And at that point, you also can't extend the timer anymore. Um, you do have the ability to rebuild that time, that um, commit, though. Just um, by doing another push, I guess. Just right. by doing another push, exactly. Yeah. And or there, there, there's also going to be like a little uh, uh, re or I forget what it is, restart build or something button in here once it's deleted. Oh, OK, nice. Yeah, and I've just noticed the extend lifetime by 30 days, which I guess ultimately is just like makes a single request. Is this the equivalent of making a single request to that yeah. that that thing, right? Yeah, exactly. I hadn't really considered the the value of this until you started describing it, because you know a lot of these revisions they're not just necessarily serving static assets, right? These might these are dynamic servers in many cases, and those could be interacting with all kinds of things. So the ability to clean that up automatically feels just like good hygiene. So um, yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be really useful. Yeah. Um, I think that leads us perfectly into the next topic, which is that we've, uh, talking about hygiene and vulnerabilities, right? Like we've, we've, um, just had a bunch of very bad Next.js and React, uh, vulnerabilities, um, right. yeah, one, like, uh, 10 out of 10 remote code execution vulnerability and yeah. a, uh, denial of service vulnerability as well. But for both of those, we like proactively, uh, patched these, um, in, in Dino deploy. But um, yeah, with, with, in like a coordinated vulnerability disclosure with with Meta and, and Vercel. Um, right. So the apps that you've deployed to deploy are not vulnerable, but you can imagine that like other cases where where things like this can happen, where uh, yeah, you don't want like old vulnerable versions of your app uh, to be sitting around forever. Right. Yeah, that's really nice. So that was that was kind of proactively um, kind of mitigated. Is that was that at the network level for us? Where was that at the at the service level for us? Where yeah, so a lot of vendors mitigated this through what's called a web application firewall. So by like inspecting incoming traffic and then blocking traffic that looks illegitimate or or right. like looks like something that could trigger this vulnerability, we didn't do that. We did a runtime level patch. Um, runtime level, right. So we've actually like fixed the the broken source code basically. Like when when Dino on Dino deploy loads this this vulnerable React or Next.js source code, we will like fix your code. Um, as we're running it, uh, which is much, much more effective than the web application firewall because you can't really circumvent it in any way, right? The, the firewall you can circumvent by crafting a packet that has different encodings or um, like, right. I don't know, the, all these web application firewalls basically work based on regexes, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if you can like craft something that triggers the vulnerability but bypasses the regex, you're still screwed, right? The, 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 the firewall didn't work. Um, so you can't do that with us because for us, like, uh, e even if the vulnerable code hits, or even if like a vulnerable request hits the um, the application, it doesn't matter because the application's been patched. Got you. Yeah, I get, um, it's probably worth saying we still recommend that people should upgrade their versions of Next yeah. right to the uh, to the patched version. But um, until that happens, we've kind of got you covered. But nonetheless, it's just it's just good practice to kind of update that and make sure that vulnerability is patched. All, all yeah. the way up the stack. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, definitely, definitely, you do update your Next.js and, and React versions. Yeah, cool. And is anything else? Anything else in the change log? Um, yeah, we have a couple other very minor things. Uh, Dino Deploy supports using organization access tokens now, in addition to user access tokens. Um, 
which is mainly useful if you're like in a CI environment and you want to run Dino deploy from like GitHub Actions, but you don't want to put your user access token into your GitHub Action secrets. You can now right. put an organization access token in there instead. Um, same also works for the dash dash tunnel flag for Dino run and Dino task. Um, and then there's also a sneaky little other feature that we haven't really talked very much about, which Ooh. you may have already spotted over here called yeah. sandboxes. Right. We're not going to talk too much about because uh, you'll all hear more about it in the new year. Yeah. But new fun stuff is coming there. Um, and you can try it out right now if you want to. It's enabled for everyone, um, but you'll it's... sort of have to sneak through the docs. To what, a, what a crafty non-announcement announcement that is. It's <laughs> like, by the way, if you happen to be snooping around in the UI and you find this, you can explore it. And uh, yeah, yeah, as you say, we're going to talk about, about that a lot more in the new year. But um, but yeah, it's interesting that people can tinker around with that if they find it there now and docs are starting to arrive as well. So it'd be interesting to, to hear if people do start experimenting and see how they get on before we've even really let the cat out of the bag. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm super, super excited about this feature. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, I think it's going to unlock a bunch of very novel uh, like things that right. people previously wouldn't have been able to do. Um, yeah. It's like a, a completely new compute primitive that we haven't really seen before. Well, we'll I'm sure we'll come back and we'll talk more about that. You know, once that's uh, once that's out in the wild. But until until then, is that everything in the? Was that everything on the list? I think it was. I think so. And this and so when is this? So this is all shipped now. This is all ready to go. I noticed that. Yeah. The date, I think was today. So and the build is there. It feels like we're. Are we able to merge this, bad boy? I think so. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, Phil, I need a review, please. Oh, hang on. Oh, this is didn't prepare for that. <laughs> it's gonna get a live review here. Live review. Here we go. Uh, da -da. Okay, let me just uh, just check through all of your spelling. Oh no! Spelling's immaculate. Hey, hey. there we go. Let's land it. Oh, we need to update the branch. Oh, no. OK, well, it'll get landed. Oh, that was such a lovely opportunity. There's some great oh. theater there that we blew. But so uh, so that's close. all right. By the Very time close. by the time this video goes out, that'll be landed. Everyone will be able to <laughs> dig into those things. Um, nice one. All right, well, thanks for the thanks for the tour. Um, I guess there'll be another one before too long. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Thanks a lot, Luca. You'll see you later.